Today, I want to talk about the great pussification of video games that has happened the past 20 years. Is it a soy-based diet doing this? Is it the rise of OnlyFans simping doing this? If you have recently had the thought, I wonder what new pumpkin-flavored items Trader Joe's has, be careful, my brother in Christ, you might be gay now. But if there's one thing that is straight as hell, it's the rock-solid video games of the 2000s. Your Gears of War, your Medals of Honor, your Chronicles of Riddicks. These games were masculine as hell, and we want them back, and we're boycotting video games until they come back. I recently saw this disappointing photo of Phil Spencer being pushed out of the photo by two domineering girl bosses who are probably unfulfilled because they're trying to succeed in the corporate world instead of having children at home like God designed them to. And don't you love Phil's cute little Doom shirt like, Hey guys, I'm still one of the bros, right? Look, like, we can still hang, right? Nah, Phil, you're trash. You got cucked, dude. You're useless. So I have found that there are still people out there who deny the simple fact that games have gone woke, homo, and gay in 2024. So in this video, I'm going to literally prove it to you using science. What we will do is read the back of the box description of six random games from 2024, and then we will read the back of the box descriptions of six random games from the 2000s. And if what I'm saying is true, we should notice a feminization, a pussification, a gayification of video games that has happened the past 20 years. And before you bring up that video games don't have boxes anymore in 2024, Calm your tits, you know what I mean. So to find six modern games, I didn't have to look very far. I literally just went to the front page of Xbox Game Pass and found these games. This is clearly what Phil and his team of homos actually expects us men to play. Here they are. Creatures of Ava, Dungeons of Hinterburg, Flintlock Siege of Dawn, Flock, Magical Delicacy, and Chia. Now you might say, oh Andrew, you're specifically picking out games aimed at children. No, dude, I'm literally just going to the front page of Game Pass, and these are six games featured on the front page of Game Pass. Also, side note, isn't it weird that these pedo developers are always making games aimed at kids? But that's a whole other thing I'm not going to get into right now. All right, so what games from the 2000s should we compare these with? These are six kind of random games that I just happen to pull off the shelf without thinking too much about it. They are Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30, Ride to Hell Retribution, Modern Warfare 2, Dark Sector, Deus Ex Human Revolution, Chronicles of Riddick, Assault on Dark Athena. And again, all I'm going to do here is read the descriptions and we will compare. 2024, Creatures of Ava. Let your empathy guide you as you play an exciting action-adventure creature saver game. Understand and tame the creatures of Ava and let them lead you through a variety of ecosystems, all in the hopes of saving the planet from a life-consuming infection. I also found out that the two main characters of this game are, of course, homosexual black women because, you know, 2024. Let your empathy guide you? Like, what the hell? I don't <laughs> I don't play video games to let my empathy guide me in, ooh, I want to be gay and collect creatures, and uh, like, this game just sounds retarded, let's be honest. So now let's compare this with a game from 20 years ago. 2005, Brothers in Arms, Road to Hill 30. The back of the box says this. They would sacrifice everything except each other. Like, damn, dude, just grabs you by the balls. Like, that is that is the back of a box. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm interested now. That is a dope intro for a back of the box. It goes on, the night before D-Day, 1944, the paratroopers of the 101st Airborne Division are dropped into Normandy and scattered behind enemy lines. As Sergeant Matt Baker, lead your squad through eight harrowing days that will define history and unite you forever as brothers in arms. Like, bro, like the balls of these games description. I have to go play this game now. See, this is what's honestly missing from the 2024 homo trash. Like, nothing is good anymore. Nothing grabs us. This is why video games profits are down. This is, and they completely quit catering to their base market of men. Next game. 2024 Dungeons of Hinterburg. Armed with a sword and a tourist guide, explore the beautiful alpine village of Hinterburg and uncover the magic hidden within its dungeons. Master magic, solve puzzles, slay monsters. All this and more awaits you in Hinterburg. Like, okay, I like swords, but based on the game's art style, I know within the first five minutes, we're meeting somebody's non-binary boyfriend. Like, nah, dude, I'm good. Now compare this with the 2013 masterpiece, Ride to Hell Retribution. Back of the box says this. 
two fists, two wheels, no rules. Now, it's a little cheesy, but I already know one thing. This game has balls, but it gets better. A lone rider, Jake Conway, locked in a battle to the death against a ruthless gang of bikers called the Devil's Hand. Okay, and you got a hot chick on the back. Like, dude, I'm in. I want to play this game now. These 2024 games will be three sentences long and still can't grab my attention. And then with like one word, this 2013 game completely has me by the balls. Like, guys, it kind of makes me sad that America actually used to export, like, cool stuff to the world, and now it's just homo-woke garbage that America is exporting. Like, you, I know you dudes in Europe know what I'm talking about. Like, America used to export, you know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, the Stallone movies, like, all of the awesome stuff of the 80s and 90s, and look at, like, the homo-trash garbage that America is exporting today, and it's such a shame. Next game, 2024 Flintlock Siege of Dawn. Step into the boot of Nor Van Anik, an elite m- member of the Coalition Army, joined by Inky, a mysterious fox-like companion, in their quest for vengeance against the gods. Guided by Inky, who shares his knowledge of the world with you, your combat skills and traversal abilities will be imbued with this magical powers, making you a duo to be reckoned with. Like, nah. Dude, it just sounds gay. It sounds queer. Why is every game like this now? It's always some magical nonsense that never sounds cool. It's like none of these developers beta tested any of these ideas with normal guys. I guarantee you get a bunch of straight dudes in a room and they would tell you this idea was terrible. Oh, but the cherry on top, of course, is this. Black female lesbian girl boss as the main character. Like, F off, dude. I'm not playing. I I think it's a woman. It might be a man. It might be a they them. All right, jumping back to the 2000s. And I know this isn't fair to compare this game, but it just popped off my shelf. 2009 Modern Warfare 2. Back of the box says this. Modern Warfare 2 continues the gripping and heart racing action as players face off against a new threat dedicated to bringing the world to the brink of collapse. Like, yes. Yes, dude. I want to know that new threat dedicated to bringing the world to the brink of collapse. Also, if you had played Call of Duty before this, you're kind of already invested. So it's a great tagline. 2024 game, Flock. Flock is a multiplayer co-op game about the joy of flight and collecting adorable flying creatures with your friends. Soar through beautiful landscapes, seeking out rare and elusive creatures to add to your flock. Like, dude, this shit is gay. Like, this is either designed for a five-year-old or it's designed for a 30-year-old gay man or it's designed for a woman. But none of those people are buying Xboxes. Like, Phil, you're retarded and your company's going to go out of business if you keep this up. All right, jumping back to the 2000s, this is a good one. Dark Sector 2008. Become the ultimate weapon. The virus, the source of your pain. Your enemy, your power. Unleash the deadly power of the glaive and become the hero. Like, dude, there's that's the back of a box right there. Now I'm intrigued. Now I'm like... Whoa, a virus? My power? What is the glaive? Like, what is this about? I want to become the ultimate weapon. Like, in the 2000s, games were made by straight dudes. And in 2020, games are made by mostly gay men and women. Like, it's it's that simple. Men, actual straight men, we want power. We want cool weapons. We want, you know, deadly powers and glaives and becoming the ultimate weapon. That sounds cool. But if you're a gay man or a woman or a child, none of which are people who actually play video games, then you want to collect adorable creatures. It really comes down to that. 2024, Magical Delicacy, and I've made fun of this game before. A wholesome pixel art platformer. Cook magical delicacies from a vast collection of ingredients in your own shop. Explore an unfamiliar town and deliver tasty treats to the townsfolk. Like, no, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, no straight guy has ever thought, I want to deliver tasty treats to the townsfolk. That is something women would do, but that is not something a straight guy would be like, ooh, I want to deliver tasty treats. Jumping back to a classic from the 2000s, Deus Ex Human Revolution 2011. The big text says, the truth will change you. Like, damn, son, what truth? I have to know. What is being hidden from me? It goes on, critically injured after a deadly attack, 
Adam Jensen undergoes a life-saving operation, augmenting him with powerful cybernetics. Caught in the middle of a vast conspiracy, Adam's choices will affect both himself and all of humanity as he seeks answers across the globe. Like, dude, I am rock hard right now. Like, I want to play this game. I don't want to play anything about collecting adorable creatures or delivering gay treats to people's houses. I want to play whatever human revolution is about. And it's funny because, like, I can't put my finger on exactly what made 2000s games so good, but it has something to do with men. Dude, we're dudes and we want games about dudes. And we want games about male transformation and identity and a man who is going through something, who is actually a man. I can't really describe what made the 2000s games so good other than that they're focused exclusively on the male psyche uh, because it was men playing the games. It's always been men playing the games. So as long as Sony and Xbox don't realize this obvious fact and keep designing games for 14-year-old girls, for women, and for gay men, um, I, I truly think Xbox is going to go out of business and Sony will go out of business if they don't figure out who their audience is quickly. 2024 game, Chia, a tropical open world adventure. Take control of any animal or object you can find and jam on your fully playable ukulele. Like, no, dude, this just sounds like some cozy garbage trash game. Like, if I wanted to if, if, if I wanted to chill out and do nothing, I would just go do something besides play a video game. But when I play a video game, I want to have, like, an intense experience. I don't want to have some cozy trash experience. Um, so my only thinking with this is that Xbox seems to think that their target is gay men, five-year-olds, and women. Um, but the super obvious fact, as I've said it again and again, is that their audience is full of 30-year-old dudes. So like at this point, I just think Xbox is probably going to go bankrupt because they keep putting stuff like this out. All right, and let's look at the final game here that I found from the 2000s. And it is called The Chronicles of Riddick Assault on Dark Athena. You already know this box is about to go hard. At the top, it says in big letters, there is power in darkness. See, like men, we want power. We're all about powers and domination and conquering. Understand your audience, guys. Below that, it says a dark, intense shooter set in an epic sci-fi world. Like, this is all things we want. We want darkness. We want intensity. We want shooting. And we want sci-fi. Riddick, Riddick brings the darkness with stealth action and brutal melee combat. And then for the first time, play as Riddick in multiplayer on System Link or online. Below that, it says, B. Riddick, the most ruthless criminal in the universe in his latest chronicle. Riddick has been captured by the Dark Athena, a mercenary ship hell-bent on eliminating him once and for all. Using his intense hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, explosive firepower, and lethal stealth, Red Riddick must shut down the maniacal Captain Ravos and her deadly crew when Riddick steps into the darkness. No one is safe. Like, dude... <laughs> Don't you want to play that game? Darkness, power, prison. Um, these, th th these describe the kind of games that guys, that men, that straight men want to play. And it's just, it's sad to see the video game industry completely bottoming out and completely dying right now because they're, they're chasing audiences that don't exist. Um, gay men don't play your games. Kids don't play Xboxes. Women don't play Xboxes. Phil Spencer and PlayStation and all these companies need to wake up and freaking realize that straight dudes are playing these games and they need to be making games for us. So developers, if you are listening, give us manly games. Give us power. Give us darkness. Give us violence. Give us brawny buff dudes who beat the crap out of people with our sick powers and if y'all do this, if y'all quit being pussies, if y'all quit pussifying the game industry and actually give us manly games, we will buy games again. But the video game industry, the video game economy is going to keep crashing until y'all give people what they want. It's so simple. I'm out of here.